I have three amazing articles for you today in the Academy of Wow! Man. And they are from my top three students here in this academy. And they all pertain to what I've been talking about this whole time. See, these three individuals have done their job, but I'm going to keep them anonymous. One of them goes by a certain alias, but that's fine. That's fine. And these three articles, they're not going to publish it because, well, it might cause a lot of scrutiny, a lot of controversy, and a lot of struggles for uh, the Western uncivilized world. Yeah, I said it. uncivilized. So without further ado, I'm going to read this first article. And the writer goes by Lee Aubin. And he blew my mind. So I'm going to go ahead and read it. So don't get mad at the messenger. I'm just the messenger. But this is written. But apparently, Lee Aubin have done his research. And he starts it off in his story. So let's go down into the fairy tale book. Once upon a time, there was a country that stood by very decent morals. Their morals were so refined, whereas all the elders, even various churches, and the government had a system that benefited family, benefited the country, benefited the people that was on its soil. But before that happened, there was years that have occurred that this very country did some very terrible things to other cultures, very terrible things to other people, very terrible things to other states and countries. But it did not regard it, did not take heed to their own bad actions. Because as the years progressed, I like how you use that word, progressed. That very same country began to loosen up its morals, its sense of duty, its sense of right nature and fortifying the future for its children by allowing and implementing the legalization of not only drugs open subductive demoralized sexuality by forms of social media that women are so keen to apply themselves to. The infrastructures that were made for people who were the best of the best, such as jobs, corporations, positions, and leadership that was made for those who was suitable, trained, and a professional in that field, that same country have allowed others who were not only uncertified, but not moralistically prepared and money hungry to be in those positions. And the mandates that were pushed down the pipe by this particular country wasn't about filling the seats with those who were competent in those positions, but it was about filling the seats for those who had an eye for this ridiculous word called equality. And the genderized 
agenda. I need not say. But the tyranny didn't stop there. The ignorance and the downslope of this country did not stop there because their intentions is not to stop until everything falls apart. Thus the common modern human nature to exterminate themselves. History tells this facts. But instead begin to create a lifestyle well, every facet, he used my word, nice. Every part of the human supposed to be natural function is dependent on this thing called a computer. Even in the schools, corporations, jobs, in the livelihood of these citizens, which will no longer be citizens, but will eventually transform to be the transhumanists that they've desired to be since the beginning of time. Well, this guy is deep. Let's continue. <laughs> wow. Whereas the computers that were used as smartphones, smart computers, smart televisions, smart watches, smart water, smart car, smart toothbrushes, smart vacuum cleaners, smart thermostats, is actually telling that common civilian that they aren't smart, that they are completely stupid. For depending on something else, such as this unfeeling, soulless computer and computer chip to think for itself. I mean, what he means is to think for the human being themselves. And if that distraction which indeed is a distraction, wasn't enough for that country. The separation between man and woman with the response of the MGDOW, which is just a response to women's inadequacy to be compatible for the average man today. Whereas she herself have transformed to be something that she never was while the man generally remains the same. But yet, she is so hell-bent on the average man, I will call Adam in this story, to be traditional, whereas she is no longer traditional, but a modern-day working woman without the potential, without the qualities, without the morals, without the drive, that the earlier women had in that said country, which have created an imbalance in the infrastructure, which have created a rift between man and woman in that country, and it was programmed to be. The genderizing dilemma has also been planned to be. The fears, the scaricities, the display of abuse and manslaughter that have been picked out by your evil media individuals behind the camera was also planned to be. To not only program, but to stigmatize and to stimulate and to push the society in one direction or the other through what they see through their eyes. For the common civilian do not or have the interest of figuring out the facts for themselves. They rather 
go along with the herd, a.k.a. the sheep, a.k.a. the sheeple of the sheep country. No longer is the future of that country worthy enough of its own ilk. For the families are no longer sought after, for there is no reason with the crooked court system and the broken, non submissive partitions of the marriage and the sensibility. In the new found world and new foundation that relationships is based on what each individual can take and not which, what each individual can give, there is no longer a reason to be married to the opposite sex. There's no longer a reason to breed a child into the now poisoned, now swamp-like soil of that said country. For those individuals, those small, those minute, those very little civilians were smart enough to realize bringing a child into this corrupt country will be a bad idea. For their future is insignificant whereas the infrastructure isn't made no longer to support this child are the child of the civilian to therefore it is all play all jokes nothing serious passive go along to get along energy wow all the while while the while this country remains on the slope of stupidity, war has never ceased to be. Evils that this country have done have never been forgotten. And evil on a daily continues to encroach on the country's soil for it has let its guard down mentally. There is no point in having great arms if you have a stupid head. Wow. Very basic. I like that. Simple. <laughs> there is no point in being a so-called superpower if you are a super idiot. That's no different with the man with the big body and bulky and muscles and capable of lifting a car and tipping over a truck. But yet he's as intelligent as a five-year-old child. Wow. This country is no longer the, the superior as it used to be. Now it's the inferior now it is the passive. Now it is the, I am going to put the cart before the horse country, whereas everything is backwards. Whereas wrong is right and right is wrong. Evidence, social media. Evidence, anything that is wrong makes money. Anything that is corrupt makes money. The politicians, the attorneys, the lawyers, the court system benefits off of things that are wrong. But should things be right or put in its proper perspectives, it isn't promoted. It isn't broadcast. It isn't appreciated. For the country's sickness is to accept the sickness like a dope fiend to heroin. can't get enough of their own swamp. So therefore, inevitably, the enemy can come in now and exact its not only revenge, 
but do what it wanted to do in the beginning of time. And that's take, dominate, destroy, and reestablish what should have been established in the past. Ladies and gentlemen, that's the end of that article. I think I understand, and you probably know what country he's talking about. And it sounds very close to home. Very close to home. And um, I want to fill in a lot of the gaps, but I think he wrote that article for you to build the bridges in between because if you're able to figure out what he's talking about from the beginning to the end then you already know what's going on in your country you already know what's going you know what country i'm talking about you already know what time of day it is you know everything i don't have to tell you anything so it's beautifully done um shout out to you lee Aubin. that was that was a good way of going about talking about this very tough subject because it's obvious. Um, I'm going to say it. I think he's talking about America. He's talking about the westernized world. He's Because, well, it's, it's obvious. It's obvious of a country that used to be great. A country that used to have a sense of self. A country that the red, white, and blue used to wave in the wind... And stood on something that made sense. It stood on a ground that was about the future of children and family and people, which is the number one. There was something that Keen Arthur said of, uh, I think it was Camelot, of Camelot. And uh, I would never, never forget this. And I'm, I brought this up in one of my other audios several times. He said, it's not the king that makes the kingdom. It's the people that makes the kingdom. Is that I may be the king, basically. I may be the king, but I am not a king if my people doesn't support me. There's no point in being a king in a castle that's empty. What makes the castle is the people. What makes a country is the civilians of the country, ladies and gentlemen. It's not about how strong you are. It's not about being a superpower. I don't care how many how many uh, uh, weapons you have to defend yourself or how strong your military is, it's not going to matter if the inside is rotted away. There's no point in buying a truck that looks good. It has a good paint job. The wheels look quite well. Everything on the outside, I mean, every single thing on the outside to the windows, to the windshield wipers, to every rubber part of it, to the bumper front and back. It can look great as much as you want it to it's not going to make a difference if the engine is destroyed if the engine is locked up if the engine is all rusted and the transmission is also busted it's shot as they call it it don't make any sense and that is how the country is operating we a lot of and i'm gonna put it like this a lot of the civilians are people have no idea what's going on on their own soil because everything is the distraction, your TV. And Lee Aubin said it correctly, your smartphone, your smart everything, everything. We don't even walk down the street or the sidewalk with our hands in our pockets anymore. We always got to have the cell phone in our face. Every five seconds, you're reaching for your cell phone. You sleep with your cell phone. You're standing there having a conversation with someone. You're reaching in your pocket and pick up your cell phone. You have no idea that you are being programmed. You are a dope fiend for your stupidity and don't know it. You have no idea you being, and he said it himself. And it was, like I said, it was beautiful the way he put it together. If your mind is in the right place, it was nice the way he put it together. He was talking about nature. Where we overlook natural things for things that are unnatural and we call it normal. Just because it's normal don't mean it's natural. Natural don't need a normalcy because it's natural. It should be, and it should not be hindered, nor molested. But the species, the human race, or you can say the new modern human today, which was born underneath a rock from some damn where, maybe Mars or Jupiter, because they're stupider today, okay? 
decided to come along and recreate your society, to recreate your reality, to recreate what they want you to think what nature is all about. And it's not such as children who are born in the, the, uh, the most recent years. They'll know anything about the past, know anything about walking uh, on the beach with sand underneath their feet. They know nothing about sitting underneath the palm trees and enjoying the wind and the air. All they know is about the dumb phone and the dumb TV and the dumb watch that you want to keep sticking mm -hmm. into the environment to make them stupid and distracted. That's all they know about. Because guess what? It's allowed because it's accepted because that's the new morals. It's the new. It is the new normal. And that new normal is what's going to poison you and sicken you until the end. I'm going to read this next article and I'm going to give you a little background on this next article because this is a, this is a, <laughs> this one blew me away. And this is, this is severe RP right here. This, if this don't give you a, if this don't put shivers down your spinal cord, nothing will. Just go ahead and be single and lonely for the rest of your life. Get prepared to uh, purchase a mechanical doll from the eastern states. Be prepared. Be prepared to stick with your, uh, your, uh, how can I put it? Your vibrator in your top drawer. Be prepared to stick with your plastic. Be prepared uh, to stick into your imaginary world and your P hubs. If you don't take what this writer's getting ready to say. Now, this article, this article is written by one of my companions. And she was responding to one of my audios that was called Women Make It Bad for Other Women. And I begin to explain in my audio that most of the time women throw dirt on themselves, meaning this, women need to correct their own bad behavior. And I recall saying that if things needed to be corrected in the disturbance between man and woman and knowing how to come together and create a marriage and a unity, then women are going to need to step up to the plate and correct other women who's making it bad for themselves. Because the reality of it is this, ladies and gentlemen, listen carefully. Most things that men are doing today, or you could say men who are going their own way, is a response to women's behavior, is a response to feminism. It's a response to women who want to fleece men, whether it be by marriage are by dating. And so men aren't tolerating it anymore. And so the majority of women who will encounter these awoke men are these men who already had the RP so many years ago. They're in for rude awakening because they're going to be in a situation where they have to be accountable for their actions and they won't find themselves married. They're not going to find themselves in a steady relationship. They will find themselves on a constant corral of pump and dump. And they're always going to have the mindset of, oh, my God, no men want to be committed to me. Nobody wants to marry me. Well, it may not be. It may not be that one girl's fault. But because 90% of the other women have made it bad for her, she's in the same bracket because none of, them, none of them are standing up to correct their bad behavior. So therefore, if no one wants to stand, it's, it's like this, you had a group of people. I'm just gonna put it like this. You got, a, let's say a group of five people who are walking down the street and two or three of the people decided to break into a car or throw a brick through somebody's window or uh, vandalize a building and you stand there and you do nothing, but yet you still walk down the sidewalk with them when they're done, you are an accomplice. You are a part of them. You are no different than they are. So when the authorities come along, when the police officers drive down the street and they catch you or whoever vandalized the building, 
you're going to be a part of them. You're going to be locked up just like they will be. You're going to be charged just like them. Even if you didn't pick the brick up and throw it through the window, you was with them. You didn't stop them. You did not correct them. You did not tell them not to do it. You went along with the program. So a lot of women do with a hive mind. That's the same thing. So if you don't step up and correct other women's bad behavior, when they're walking around like a 304, if they're fleecing men, they're lying, they're they're doing crazy things on Instagram and, and OnlyFans, and you do nothing about it, you're no different than they are. So therefore, because you don't do anything, because you don't be you don't become the unicorn, you don't you do not show nor have any physical evidence that you are different than them, you'll be treated just like them. And therefore, there are some women, some women who are realizing it. And this young lady here, my companion, she did I'm not going to tell, not going to say her name because she wants to stay anonymous. Okay. But I'm going to, I'm going to read to you what she wrote down here. And this blew my mind. And she didn't want to, she could have did it herself, but because I already have a platform, because I already have an audience. She wanted me to go ahead and read this. So I'm going to go ahead and do it. So uh, buckle up your seats. And uh, she did her research. And this girl is serious because, listen, she, okay, let me let me put it like this. She don't want to be dragged down into the swamp in the mud like every other, like every 304 because she's not a 304. Of course, she's my companion. The girls I choose to be in my world, they are assets. They support me. They provide uh, quality and wealth for my business. I don't hang around women just to uh, uh, wait on them or to praise them. No, I'm always on my square. So therefore, they're going to have a proper seat. But anyhow, let's keep, let's continue on here. Let me go ahead and read it because I can babble on this all day. It says this. Modern women if they don't accept partnership, and now this, now hold on, before I begin reading this, I read it once and twice before I decided to bring this to you. It's starting off going downhill is how she's starting it. She started off as what you are to expect from the modern woman. And it doesn't start off good. So let's, let's go. Modern women, if they don't accept partnership with the same age men who will ruin and run them ragged with kids, sex, drugs, or verbally abuse them, their alternatives is to become sugar babies for the wealthy around the world through their phone or there will be strippers who are supported with drugs alongside the beta assistance from men, older men who don't really care, just to pay for their attention. Second, after this large 304 phase, mostly which will be in their 20s, then they will seek to secure a beta boyfriend who she can retain a custody of him for a short while, as well as maintaining her social media presence as an available single woman to keep her options open. Dang. She's keeping her options open in order to monkey branch onwards to her next pray. Lastly, after she becomes older and her youth is declining, possibly even burdened with children, she's eager to give her leftover years, dang, to a beta who's willing to sign over his life in marriage, albeit with her seducing powers of deception to deceive that said beta into thinking that she is the prize. Whoa. However, she successfully manipulates him by 
multiple facets, such as saying she's a born again Christian and other strategies to repackage herself to avoid her horrible past, which is actually still present and programmed to fleece him. Thus, the results is and will be to destroy the marriage. A marriage, mind you, where she only desired the experience but never desired to actually be a wife. Wow. Let that sink in for a second. She's talking about the modern day woman today, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, you'll be surprised. You will be, you will be hung, go, surprised. How many women go down this path? Now, this is coming from a woman here. This is a, this is a lady talking like this. She has girlfriends and she was able to see them do exactly that. Exactly that. Did you hear what she said in the beginning? She said, get with the guy that's her age. What does that mean? What does that mean? That means if she's, if a 20 something year old girl get with a 20 something year old guy who's probably one year older or maybe two years older, this guy's not yet in his prime. This guy don't know too much about what she's doing to him. But because he's so immature, because he's so stuck in his, uh, uh, what do you call that? Uh, full of ignorance, you know, full of misguidance and most likely raised by a single mom. There's a chance that he's going to ruin her. There's a possibility that he is no good to her. This is why, this is why a lot of women seek men who are older than them because they have more experience and they're somewhat established in the world. But there are a lot of women, what my companion was saying, there is a lot of women who is told by their mother and some fathers, bozo, blue pill, beta fathers, to get with a guy who's around her age because they think in their illogical mind that's the logical thing to do. And it is illogical. It is stupid. It's dumb. Because this girl in her experience and in her body is a lot older than this guy who's the same age as she is. He's not yet prepared to handle the responsibility of what this girl is requiring in her life. So he's going to make mistakes. The chances of mistakes is very high. It's very prevalent. So there is a chance where she will end up in an abusive relationship and a struggling relationship. They're going to go out there and try to start a home and start a life or get a, a trailer park or wherever they, they, are, they will be. And she's always going to depend on mommy and daddy. And he's never going to be able to provide for her. Never. There's always exceptions to the rules, but over here in the Academy of Wildman, we don't talk about the exceptions to the rules. We talk about what the problem is. You don't go around the building. If there's no fire, you're not going to try to put the fire out where there's no fire. You're going to go where the fire is and the root of the fire. Don't be stupid over here in this Academy because I will roast your pig behind. So we're talking about the majority. If the majority of it is, it is unbalanced. So a lot of these women, because they're programmed by single moms, are those who are uneducated, mentally, I would say this, mentally stupid, realistically. They're not thinking, they're not thinking mathematically. I mean, actually, they're thinking by the digits. They're not thinking by science and nature because they don't even do their own studies on themselves because they've probably been a failure of their own entire life as well. They want to make a failure out of their own daughter's life. They say, no, he's 25. You're 24. You're perfect together. And it this boy ruins this girl's life and she ends up struggling and she ends up through her ignorant behavior because during that phase, she's trying to understand some things. So it's like two blind mice leading each other. Thank you, mom. Very stupid. Thank you. So that's what she meant about a man being uh, a girl being with the girl. That's a, a guy that's her age. Now I can break this, uh, I can break it down even further because you need to know what's going on yourself. You do your own research. If you don't know anything about what the RP is all about, if you don't know anything about MGTOW, you're in the wrong country. 
go back to where you came from and don't you start a relationship nor a marriage because if you do you're going to find yourself in the divorce court you're going to find yourself fleeced you're going to find yourself in a situation that you're going to regret not getting the proper information for i'm not going to sit here and explain it to you because it's going to be too long to uh to try to inform an idiot since you want to be stuck on watching BET and television your whole damn life, that's your problem. The real talk is so, when you look at social media, social media will tell you things that television can never tell you. When you hear me talking, I told you this before, you won't hear this on mainstream media. They're not going to do it because that's going to cause all kind of ruckus because it's too real. And it's going to put pastors and preachers out of a job. Because I tell it exactly like it is, and they don't want that. I told you. What was the first, what did Lee Aubin tell you? What was it in his first article? He said they love evil. What is wrong is right. What is right is wrong. They want to silence what is right. They want to silence the things that will open up the eyes of the civilian, but they want to keep progressing and allowing things that's going to put you to sleep, make you more stupid than what you are already. I tell it like it is over here. If you don't like it, too bad. Go find somebody else who's going to lie to you. If you don't care about your children, that's your problem. Just reap the benefits when your time comes. Because guess what? They're going to be coming back home saying, Mom, Dad, you didn't tell me this. And you're going to be sitting there with your thumb stuck up your dark tunnel. Talking about, well, I didn't know my thought. I didn't want to believe in, in what they was putting up. Yeah, because you're, you, first of all, you failed yourself by saying believe. No, you didn't want to accept the facts because you're too programmed. I think every I think every man should understand what an RP is, the RP. I think you should understand what MGTOW is really all about. I think you need to understand before you get engaged in a relationship, just like before you go on to the job, before you get hired on to do whatever important ties that they put before you, you need to be trained. Before you get into a relationship, you need to know what your relationship is all about today in this new world because it's a new time. This isn't 1960 and 1940 anymore, Bozo. This is 2021, or you can say the 2020s. As I said in my book, 2020s, America rise or fall hard. It's not going to change and it's not going to get any better until you get the knowledge to navigate are you going to find yourself in a terrible situation? I'm going to share something with you after this, actually. I got a story now that I'm uh, reading all these stories for you. I'm going to go ahead and... Uh, yeah, I think I'm going to share that story with you. I'm going to do that. I'm not going to tell no names, but I'm going to tell you a real life story. I'm just going to put it like this. I met a man who was going to off himself. Yeah. I met a man... Who did the what do you call that? I think um, I think uh, Greg Adams call it the hope strategy. He had the hope strategy, and I met this man uh, a couple of months ago. Yeah, today the 2021s. We still don't get the message, but I'm a I'm gonna fill you in. But let me go ahead and read this last article by another one of my number one fans and students in this academy of Wow men. And this one blows my mind. So again, buckle up your seatbelt and listen to what real people have to say. This next writer really touched me. I was actually at a Starbucks when I was reading this in my uh, over my laptop. And um, I normally drink tea, I don't drink coffee. But uh, that morning, I decided to uh, get a mocha frappe. Exit the sugar, because I don't do a lot of sugar at all. And uh, I wasn't going to drink it anyway, but when I heard, well, when I read this <laughs> from one of my viewers, I pretty much spilt my coffee all over the table and spit it out. Because I, I didn't know this, but let's continue. I'm going to go ahead and read it. Then I'm going to give you my uh, my spiel at the end. Okay? Leon C., a.k.a. Morpheus 
LCM. The big guy, the big alpha. You may not know this, but I've been wanting to, wow, delete myself for quite some time. I've been struggling with trying to find answers to my spiritual questions. And the day came when I took a long bike ride on the sidewalk in busy traffic. My whole intentions was to run out there in the middle of the street unknowing and finish the deal. But before I got into it, I stopped at a place to eat. And I had to rethink my steps before I went through the process. And I was looking for answers of God's presence, God's answers, God's love, God's deliverance. And I wanted to listen to lecturers on this particular subject, but I kept running into pastors that we hear about like T.D. Jakes and others who only want to continue the program of making you feel good, but not tell you the truth. Then I came across one of your channels And I began to listen to one of the first ones that pretty much changed my life, which is called Noah's Ark, the beginning of Shippo. That really got me thinking that I was deceived. That got me thinking that I've been misled. So I thought of putting off my program of deleting myself another day to hear what you had to say. I took the week off of work because my plan was not to come back. So I had time to listen to what you had to say. So I went home, put my bike up, rearranged my room and sat down and blast you on my radio And that particular audio really opened up my mind, but it didn't stop there, Mr. Morpheus. I began to listen to several other audios like God didn't know, question mark, and God is not God and programmed ignorance. By the end of the day, you gave me a different perspective. And I began to look at the other passage, read through the Quran, and read through the Christian book as well. And I put the pieces together when you described the understanding of God being based on anthropomorphic ideas. Then I look up the word of anthropomorphic, human expression, human understanding based on the human scale, based on looking at something based on the human's perception, human's clarity. Then it began to click. I wanna thank you because you've changed my life. I am glad that I did not delete myself for I would have deleted myself as to the program of religion itself. Religion have taught me how to hate myself. They told us that we were sinners, even though we didn't bring ourselves into this human world. They told me I was wrong, even though I was six years old, 15 years old, 17 years old. I wasn't even responsible for myself. And that I was in need of some sort of Holy Ghost. I was in need of some sort of baptism. I was in need of some type of guidance from a man who was supposed to be speaking from God. And I begin to wonder 
How come God could not come and speak to me for himself? Oh, wow. Wow, 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 wow. I have learned how to put my emotions aside and accept what is over what isn't. Oh, this guy has done his research. Seriously. And that in itself have exposed the truth underneath the lie that most people are still living today. And now I understand that I was constantly attacked, constantly at war, not with prince and principalities, not with God and the devil. It wasn't a battle of heaven and hell. It was a battle of the lie and the information that has been manipulated by human beings themselves. Wow. I wasn't fighting against the devil. I was fighting against the program that mankind have put before many people's faces. I was fighting against not knowing why I wanted to leave, but I knew that I was enslaved by my lack of information. Oh, man. Oh. <laughs> this guy's sharp. He goes on. I was just a blind sheep in need of guidance. Same as the rest of them, which would have led me to the end of my life. And now because of you, Leon C. Morpheus, because you cared enough to fight enough to put this information out here for a person like me. I am no longer that kind of sheep. I think for myself. Now I study heavily in the libraries. I am on the verge of excelling in my career. And I'm glad I didn't delete myself because now things are becoming open for me and I am taking charge of my future. And on the side, every now and then, I am able to inspire and help others to realize that they are just completely deceived. That it isn't all about God and the devil. It's not about heaven and earth. This isn't a spiritual war that we're battling. We are battling to find the truth. That's as simple as it can get. And because the lie of Christianity and religion, that's many other religions, have been put before humanity for such a long time, that lie needs to be reversed so the truth can be expended. But it will only be a few. I write you this to show you and tell you that your works is not in vain. It may not be many who will agree with you and your lessons, dear professor. But you have saved one life here and I am at full gratification. And may others like myself be open-minded and accept the fact that we have simply been deceived. And the initials down here, he left Ben K. That blew my mind because before I read that, I was going through uh, our channel. Because again, it's not my channel, our channel. Whether you want it, whether you want it or not, it's here for you, not for me. <laughs> okay, because it, it's there. It's just like you have a. Uh, it's almost like fruits that's that's available on the tree, uh, a, a ripe apple without worms. I mean, very good, healthy apple is there, but it's for you. Anybody can come and pluck the apple. It's universal, right? You know, any animal, you, a horse, strange person can come and pluck this apple. So the information is there. And there's a lot of things that point towards the information. I mean, there's YouTube here. I'm starting to upload some things on Instagram as well. And I'm a, 
start linking some of my Instagram down there in the description box for you. It may not be a lot, and uh, it's going to be the same as what you hear here. It's just a different platform, but um, eventually I'll start logging in my Instagram for you. But it's available whether you want it or not. It's still there. You can walk past it. You can ignore it. You can let it rot on the tree and fall to the ground. But there will be someone who's hungry for the truth. There will be someone just like my friend here who may need that at a dire end. And I'm glad I was able to turn his life around because that's what I want to do. That that matters to me more than anything. It may be everyone. It don't matter. You know, no, no one could care about what I'm saying. But as long as one person's life is saved, one person can avoid how can I put it jumping over a bridge because they feel lost they feel like again feel because it's a feeling here they feel as if they are um, ignored that there is no information out there that they that they can find a different life somewhere else not being here in the land of the living that really touches me. And it and it surprised me as well. I knew that I've helped people. I've always had. I knew that I brought people up to a different perspective in their existence. But to hear it this raw is very breathtaking. and exceptional to the everyday jargon. Now I'm gonna go ahead and give you my Morpheus suplex, like they do in wrestling. I think one of my favorite moves was the suplex. I think that's what it was called. When uh, they duck their head under, the, under your arm, you just lift them up and you just swing them over your head and boom, right in the back. So I wanna save this to the end. There are three things that these three individuals have in common. Three things. Um, <laughs> well, I won't say three things, but they do have something in common. There are three individuals for sure, but they do have something in common. They were willing to learn. That's key here. Willing to see things differently, see things for what they really are. To go back in time and look at the way the world used to be and to try to figure out the answer in between. See, a lot of individuals in your common world, we live in a like space bubble society where you think it's all about you. It's all about your own struggle. It's all about you and your personal little bitty experience on your little bitty island. And because we think like that almost often, we're dealing with a corrupt world. We're dealing with the world where everybody has their own set truth. There's a thing that people say, oh, my truth. It's my truth. No matter what would you say, it's my truth. Okay, bozo. Here comes a suplex. Go ahead and take your ignorant, funny, probably stinky butt and walk into the fire okay and you let me know if that fire burns because the universal truth is your ass is gonna get burnt be stupid all you want to i love stupid people because i'm gonna roast you on public media be stupid oh that's your truth i'll tell you okay you see that fire over there you need to avoid it because if you don't avoid it you're gonna get burnt you're gonna go to ashes you and everything that's about you you're going to be gone from the face of the earth. Don't even walk into it. And you can sit there all you want to under, behind the panel or wherever you are, behind your TV screen or your, your dumb computer because it's not smart. It may be smarter than you. Okay. And say, well, it's my truth. It's my experience. And my experience, I was able to run through and survive. My truth is it's not really fire and it don't burn. It's your perception, Morpheus. You're just talking stupid. 
You don't know anything about God. What do you know about relationships? What do you know about helping people and saving lives? <laughs> you're just talking. You're just so negative. You're a misogynist. This fire don't burn. That's my truth. Okay. Go ahead and go into the fire and see what happens. Go. You and all that you are, and you let me know how that works. As a matter of fact, I'll know because I'll smell your stinky asses from a dip, from a distance. Okay? And don't don't expect for me to be at your funeral or to even care either because you decided to jump into it. Where did we get off today thinking that we can go around? See, that's... <laughs> That's why it, this is why I agree with my first writer. This is why Lee Aubin was so on point. Where this is this is this is what you will stamp and say only in America. This is what you put underneath the stamp. When you have a stamp and you want to stamp something like an envelope, just put say only in America and stamp it that we think this way. Where you got plenty of clown looking, red nosed, funny, buck tooth ignorant, uneducated, senseless, and moronic thinking species, zombie individuals, excuse me, sheeple, who will be the only one to say, well, that's my truth, not your truth. My truth. When there is universal truths, universal facts, the majority speaks. Not the minority. Not the minimalist. The maximus. Or for you, the gluteus maximus. <laughs> Lord. It's amazing how we're so stuck on ourselves. It's always about money. It's all about you and your own infrastructure. You don't care about the next person. Only as long as you succeed. So because you have a little minor experience, you think everybody else is the same. Most times when I am speaking to you, it is a pan situation. My experience don't mean nothing. I can talk to you all I want to on this platform about how I feel about the thing. It won't mean a pile of uh, squatted flies. I can even tell you about what I think about a thing. It still won't matter because guess what? If I'm not coming from statistics, if I'm not coming from things that are universal, if I can't come to you, what well, what you already know about air is air, water is water, fire burns. There's no need for me to open up my damn mouth. But you in a country now where it's okay, it's my opinion, it's my truth. I don't give a dog on about my truth. That's my little personal experience. It's about what's going on in the entire country, or you can say the entire world if you really do your research, where you can see danger coming from a mile away. You can see things happening before it's going to happen. You're going to see it happen. There was a lot of things when it came to, um, I was going to, I'll put it like this. What Lee Aubin said in the beginning of America I seen that coming before it even when the Dell computer started to expand, when they started putting uh, tracking devices in cars and trying to make them cheaper, where you have the sheet metal where you can cut it in half and all this between there is foam and plastic. I knew America was they're They're getting ready. They was getting headed towards where they are today and declining still. And the mindset of families I knew that once they started making social media a platform to be a professional 304 or to sell yourself, um, how do you, how do you, it, what's that word? Uh, legal prostitution. I knew it was over. I knew, I knew that we were going to endure what we are dealing with today. These things aren't something that's based on my experience. It's based on what you see for yourself. If you open up your damn eyes, but we don't want to because guess what? Some of us see some of us are in a marriage right now. Yeah. Some of some of you have already sold yourself to the devil. And so it's hard for you to get out of it because you're in it now. You already patched yourself up. You signed the contracts. Now you're just waiting for the boat to drown. Eventually it will. 
and you're just trying to deal with your situation. You know, a lot of you are ministers, pastors, or all these type of uh, scenarios that you have signed yourself up for. So you can't really dodge the bullet. You can't. You're in the battlefield. So you don't want to actually shed your skin of what you know is false. Or, so I put it like this. What you don't know is false because you haven't seen the other side of the river. A man came to me the other day. And uh, I really didn't know too much about this guy. But he was an older gentleman. He was in his 50s or yeah, he was in his 50s, I'll say 57, 58, something like that. And um, I approached him because he had a dog. And I appreciate animals. I appreciate nature. Nice, good looking dog. You know, clean brown fur. Looks very healthy. And uh, we begin to talk. I begin to ask him questions like, how's his dog? How's the day? And things like that. And he had this humglum personality where he himself sounded like he wanted to give up too. He felt kind of burdened down. Very sorrowful because he began to talk about some of his troubles and his struggles. Say, yeah, I just got out of relationship and you know, I wouldn't be out here if my wife didn't take care of everything. And that's how it began, ladies and gentlemen. I said, uh, what did you say? So yeah, man, I, I got along with this woman. You know, she was, uh, you know, she was a, 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 a pretty little Mexican thing. I'm like, okay, uh, do tell. <laughs> but yeah, uh, you know, I, yeah, I met her at a diner one day and, you know, hooked up with her and, you know, we started hanging out with each other and I used to own a, a couple of acres and I had a couple of houses and I, I was into real estate. And you know, she stuck with me for a little while, then things started to go rotten. Eventually, we ended up in the courtroom, and she ended up taking half, if not everything, that I owned. I just went ahead and gave her the house. Oh, you know, sold, sold the land that I had, and you know, I had to live in a little bitty apartment thereafter, and things just start declining for me. And then he began to tell me something else that really is amazing about dumb men. It's amazing. Yeah, dumb men. I said it because it's, again, that fire that's out of discipline. I say, don't run in the fire. You do it anyway because it's your truth. Oh, Morpheus, it's just my truth. You don't know what you're talking about. Who hurt you? Who hurt you? You're mad at God and who hurt you? Those are the two main things I get. You're upset because... God don't want to do what you want him to do. And 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 also, some woman hurts you. That's why you're on this trip. Uh, no, ladies and gentlemen, let's continue with the story. Because this guy is not me. This guy is himself. I'm not going to say his name. And he said, well, I'm with another woman right now. And you know, she's younger and she's fine. But, you know, she's living in my apartment right now. Getting ready to head over there and, and, and see her. I said, wait a minute. So you've been burnt once upon a time. You've already got half, if not more, of everything that you own taken away from you. And you dwindle down to an apartment now. And you let this girl move in so you can start all over again. Don't learn your cotton-picking lesson. Stupid. Dumb. And he's sitting there like, you know, I don't know. You know, my life isn't the really way that I want it to be. And, you know, it could be much better. And I had to be honest with this guy. I had to really, because I, I'm usually am anyway, but direct. Sometimes you don't want to really roast a person too soon because you can lose a good partner you can lose a good friend you can you know push them further over the edge oh, nobody understands me i want to quit it all but i said listen do you realize that you are you you're deleting yourself you're you're suey yourself each time when you take a risk like that you've already been fleeced probably a couple of times and now you want to start all over again and you're 50 58 something years old you're going to find yourself in two places The you're going to find yourself in a nursing home or are you going to find yourself 
in uh, in a homeless shelter somewhere. But there are some men who don't comprehend the way that the world is working today. They don't know that it's not about morals anymore. People are out to just take. They're not out to give. People are out for themselves. They're not out to support the next person. They're not out here trying to uh, 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 build up some fundraiser and, and try to you know put flowers in front of somebody's doorstep and, oh, let me help you out with this. Oh, you need help with that? Let me do that for you. No, I don't want none in return. I just want to do it because I care about you. Now, people, especially the opposite sex for men, because they're, I'll put it like this. Women aren't what they used to be. They're a lot more bold with themselves now. If you listen to what my companion wrote they're a lot more bold now it used to be where it was a an undercover thing whereas you know, i'm not really about the money but i just want to be with him because i love him i love him no 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 uh -uh. now it's well um you know maybe if you if you buy me this if you make this certain amount of money if you're rich if you're popular then i'll love you really really I beg your pardon. After this man brings something to the table, then you're going to love him? No, you don't love him. You love his stuff. No, you love what he has to offer you. You don't love him as a man. Men need to understand this fact. And again, this isn't about Morpheus's little bitty experiences because I have my companions. I already told you that my companion wrote this, that uh, that passage. I got companions, plural. So it's not like I'm really struggling at this particular point. No, Uh uh-uh. But I am still concerned about other men. I still know how real it is. I'm still not blinded to the reality of the RP or you could say MGTOW. Because it's still happening. Even if I'm fortunate, even if I'm well off, the reality still stands the same. I'm just, what do you call that? The exception to the rule. Or you can say one of the, uh, 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 one of the ones who got away. <laughs> okay. That's fine. But you don't still, you still don't see me sitting here talking about, well, you know, all these people, these, these men are just, they're, you know, they're just too soft. They need to go out there and try harder. Go out there and, and date harder. Go find another woman who's going to fleece you. You, you. You're just not saying the right thing. You're not coming or you're not using the right type of game. No, I know for a fact what's going on. And I'm not ignorant to it either. So just to tell you, this is really happening. You just don't want this. A lot of people don't want to accept. I'm not going to say you. You probably comprehend this. A lot of people don't want to accept how evil this country have become and rotten on the inside, terrible on the inside, because there's we're not doing enough to make it better. We just want to entertain each other. We want to create a social media where we show somebody how to cut logs all day. <laughs> hey, I polished my car yesterday and look at it today. Your car can shine just like mine. And you sitting there struggling and you got other issues at home trying to raise your children. And what, what, what? And this one person who's showing you how to create a, a, a cake with, with colorful uh, uh, cream on top. And how to cut a strawberry on top of it. With uh, 3.5 3. million likes. Well, what the hell? But yet you're still trying to figure out how to how to create your own infrastructure, trying to survive and provide a future for your child. Like you really have time to sit there and watch somebody make a cake for for the sake of entertainment. That cake be damn. It is not going to save your future. You need to be looking at stuff that's going to be pertaining to your life. To what you're going to be dealing with, to what you're going to get yourself engaged with eventually. And the biggest thing that we're dealing with is the camaraderie between the civilians. It's the civilian type of thing. It's man and woman combating against each other. With the so-called lies that are being in between, like the dating coaches and your religion trying to dictate it all. Oh, I want my man to love God. And she never loved God. She, oh, my, oh, man, I ain't even going to go there. I'm going to try not to go. How... 
how is this modern woman going to tell you she wants a God-fearing man and she don't even respect the common man herself. So she don't respect nor honor a man for himself because she only respects his money and his prospects. Because she want you to be this God-fearing man where you respect and you honor God. But she don't even honor you. You tell me how that works. And you bozos get involved anyway and you find yourself fleeced or divorced. Or, oh my God, this child was never mine. Go figure, idiot. Oh, I didn't know that she used to do this when she was you know, uh, uh, 21 years old. Yeah. Yeah, her pictures are out there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, she was a so-called swimsuit model. And so was a photographer when he had a few pieces of her, too. And now she's your wife 20 years later. Dummy. I didn't understand. I didn't know she was talking to three other different guys on Instagram while we were together. No, because you blue pill. Because you, you think with your little bitty head down there. You know, your two inch stretch. Not you don't you're not even thinking about what's on top of your head because it haven't been programmed on top the right direction. As a matter of fact, it's overly programmed. That's what makes you blind and stupid to begin with. I don't listen, I don't respect I don't honor, I, I do not feel sorry for bozo men who have a prospect of expanding their life and doing better for themselves in their business or their career who decide to tamper their own selves down and say, I'm going to get married, happy wife, happy life. All his talent and his ability goes in that direction and he ends up stunt. What do you mean by stunt? What are you talking about, Morpheus? What are you what are you saying? Now you're talking about your personal experience. Now you're talking evil. Now you stepping on men. Okay. I go, I do, and I'm free to do whatever I want to do. I'm a free man. What does that mean? I'm not tampered down in marriage. I got companions. I got girls, not girl. You got girl. I got girls. That are of asset and quality in my life. And they know full well if they don't get straight, they get bent out out of the door I don't have to deal with them I'm not in the point where I'm married to this woman happy life happy wife if I if I stand up for myself if I don't take care of her and make her feel happy then and I'm going to be sleeping on the couch no uh 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 buddy nah uh uh that's you because you decide to be a modern day traditional idiot whereas modern women are not really traditional today so you clamp yourself down See, I can go play, I can go golfing, I can go overseas, I can go play football, I can go sit down at a football, I can do anything I want to do, practically. Don't even have to come home if I don't want to. I can go spend the night of a different uh, a different state if I want to. I can go to a convention center and none, none of my girls are going to be like, where you at? What you doing? Because one of them might be there, or all three of them might be there, or two of them are going to be in the back seat. You know, licking on some ice cream. <laughs> okay. Why you talking about, oh, I got obligations. I got three teenagers to take care of. And I got a wife at home who don't want to go nowhere and do nothing. And she's 250 pounds. Because she, her not taking care of herself in the past. Then you want to delude yourself or escape the, escape the reality that you signed up for something that you didn't know was going to be what it is today. Dry in a sexless relationship. You can't say if you mess up, get out. She'll tell you. The little boy who got married, uh, if you mess up, you slip on a couch or you get out. And then she can take you to the court and fleece you. And take your kids away from you. How smart are you? Me, on the other hand, don't have any of that type of issue. I can tell her, hey, get right or get out. It's my house. It's my home. It's my time. It's my freedom. It's my clock. It's my space. And if she don't like it, they already know they can be replaced. The other two girls are going to say, okay, you know, oh, goodbye. We're going to find somebody else. Goodbye. Go. Bye. Go fly. Because I'm not going to be on their program. They're going to be on mine. But you, on the other hand, you can't do it because you're still thinking this is 1940 in the 2021s. Out of your mind. Here's the shingle law on this. If you think I'm just stepping on people's toes and oh you know morpheus you know shut your mouth and you know i'm married i don't know what you're talking about i got a perfect marriage 
Here you go again, thinking about your little bitty experience in your small little world, you. Universally, most men, when I talk to, there's, they're always complaining. They're always too tired. They never have enough time. These men, I, I'm gonna have to make a, another audio. I'm gonna have to make a video one of these days and actually show you so you know I'm not playing around. Because sometimes y'all don't, I'm gonna say like our, our old grandpa and grandma used to say, y'all don't believe fat means greasy. Y'all don't because you're stuck in your dumb space bubble and you're so deceived by what you see on television. You think everybody lived that lifestyle. There are people who are married. There are suffering. They are suffering. I have friends who decided to walk down the aisle. And here I am getting ready to go to New York City to get some stuff done. Let's go, doc. Let's go. Let's go, dog. I got these things to take care of. And we're going to go. Uh, uh, you know, they got a they got a wonderful fish shop over here. You know, they got a they got a one. They playing a show over here. And uh, afterwards, we're going to go to the hotel and and and. Uh, um, Enjoy some some uh, some events that they have going on over there. You know, then we're going to meet some girls over here at this casino and blah, 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 blah. And he's like, I can't go. I can't go. Oh, you know, they got a they got a car show over here. And uh, I'm getting ready to pull out one of my cars and, <laughs> you know, and we're going to go enjoy the car show. And, you know, you can bring yours and, you know, show off your truck that you just brought last week and. You know, there's an entry fee, but, you know, we can take care of them. I can't go, man. I can't go. I can't go because I'm married. I can't go. My wife ain't going to let me do that. My wife ain't going to. Here we go. My wife ain't going to let me do that. I got kids to take care of. My kids are in school, man. I'm a responsible man. But I want to do it. Then I go down there. I enjoy the car show. Hang out at the hotel. You know, my girls there, or some other girls, just enjoying myself. And then guess what? I get a phone call that next morning from this bozo talking about, man, I wish y'all would have went because all night long, my wife was just barking at me, complaining about every little thing. I didn't even get me none that night. My children was just, you know, asking me for all kinds of stuff, you know, just demanding I got to take my child to school, get prepared for, I mean, take my child to the store, get prepared for school and to buy this and buy that. I mean, if I was single, I would never do that. Here they go complain about the money that they got to spend on their child and their own family. And why the hell did you sign up for it? Oh, you know, that, that, that was the Christian thing to do. As a Christian, I'm supposed to get married. It's better to marry than the bird. Then I'll throw it back at him. Then, uh, <laughs> are you burning now? Genius. It sounds to me like you already burning. <laughs> you burning by even signing up for the, the archaic, broken, silly tradition. That's not even supported in this country. Dumb. And then what really, what really tilts the scale is these men have talent. I see men who, oh, here's, it's like this. I see men who can really get somewhere in the world. They they build things. They're architects. They uh, uh, they very funny. You know, they're talented. You know, they're able to. Uh, they want to go places. You know, you can have a good conversation with these guys. They uh, they have degrees, right? You know, they they want to. They got boats in the backyard. They may have a. Uh, they just brought a Chevy Silverado and you know, extended the wheels and get it lifted and all this kind of Harley Davidson, but they can't do nothing with it. There, there's nothing they can do with it. Their Harley Davidson collects dust. Their truck sits there. It's like they, they brought this truck just for looks, but they got a family now, you know, they got their obligation now and they're limited <sighs> done. And this woman don't want to go nowhere. You know, she want to hang out with the girls she wanted to do sneaky stuff. Most likely she's probably getting banged out by somebody, some other dude somewhere when she's not giving it up to him. But yet he's obligated or signed himself up to be obligated and responsible to raise his kids the right way, which is fine. But then he's he's capped. I mean, you're you're limited. You're stuck right there. And then most of these guys, they don't find out. It, it, it's like this. This is what the guys will say. They'll say this to me. They'll say, well, you know, Morpheus, you know, we've been together for like 20, 25 years. And uh, 
it's been just fun and I signed up for it and I had my fun and I had my days. I had my girls. I know you want to go out there and, and uh, get on the race car track for a few minutes and, you know, I see the fun stuff that you do. I like to do it, but, you know, I've done that. Man, I hear what you say about my wife and women. Yeah, women are like that, but my wife is different. And I ask her, ask my question, but okay, so have you even, you know, you've been together for 25 years. Do you even care about her past? Do you know what happened, you know, all up until you met? Well, you know what? You know, she's been a good wife. Name's working out. These same guys end up divorced a few years later. These same guys end up finding out that she's been doing things behind his back later, later on. Or he questions why she no longer is sexually attracted to him. Why she no longer want to flip flap with them anymore. Because the kicker is this. He don't find out what my companion just wrote to us and said. This girl had her fun in her 20s. She was around the world already when she was in her 30s most likely. And then decided to settle down somewhere and find this blue pill beta. And she have no more juice left over. She has nothing else. She don't have much to offer this guy. And to her, it's just a resting nest. It's a rest haven. Especially if this man is still getting better. He's still uh, doing good for himself. He wants to go and do mountain climbing. He's going for nice jogs. Or he want to go to the gym and hang out with the boys. He want to go to a good football game, sit back, drink a beer, just relax. He can't do it. Because he has somebody who's nesting in his home. Who should not even been there the, the first time. But he just wants to procure the access of her sexual body. So he decided to marry her. And don't realize that he's marrying something that's going to be an anvil or a dead weight in his life. That's at a high percentage. And you want to know what more, more truth behind that? You want to know more statistics? You want to back that up? Do you want to back it up? Women initiate divorce 80% of the time. The question is why? Never satisfied. Never satisfied. Never satisfied. Yeah. Never satisfied. Never satisfied. Never, ever, ever, ever satisfied. According to how she was when she was, again, 20, 30 years old. And a lot of dumb guys think that they can satisfy that thirst. A lot of American bozos think that they can satisfy that thirst of that American modern woman. Not understanding what she's been through in her past. So he ends up jinxing himself. And then got nerd to complain to a guy like myself because I'm not tapped down like him. Because I got three girls that are with me. He's like, man, how do you do it, man? It's expensive. Well, I'm not a beta like you. I'm not soft like you. I'm not dumb like you. I don't limit myself like you. And I'm not going to let nobody tell me what to do as a man like you. And I know my manhood, unlike you not knowing yourself. Passive Honda Civic driving ass. I have an abundance mindset. And I told you the story, and I'm going to remind you again. I had a friendship with a very wealthy man who told me on his deathbed the secrets of his life. And I would never forget, and I'm going to tell you again, because it is a rule of thumb. I think I told you this in the Academy of... In, um, Wildman, one of my Wildman lessons. Wildman lesson. I got Wildman lesson one to, to 11 or something like that. But in one of my Wildman lessons, this rich guy that I know, are known of, who's no longer with us, told me not to ever limit myself. Never limit myself. He didn't say let the world limit me. He said limit my self because he regretted a lot of the things that he did. 
And there was nothing else more serious to him than to be free to be himself. And in order for you to be yourself, you got to know your nature. You got to know your phylum. You got to know what you're capable of. And you got to see yourself in the future, not the now. Bozo men don't have an abundance mindset. They got a limited mindset. They need to be told what to do like grown damn children. Y'all such idiots where you think that tradition still work today at a time where the country is no longer traditional. And then you think you're going to have a successful life and relationship. No, you're just going to be like every other wind up automaton. I'm supposed to get a job, get married, grow older, have kids, pass away and leave my seeds and my legacy behind. And you just stay right on that rat wheel forever. Common anthropomorphic energy never evolving to be the next evolution none while most women think that you evolving do you know that, let me I, oh my goodness do you know that the common modern woman today thinks that we are at the point of evolution do you know why she think that the only thing that have de-evolved let me put it like this because they think their evolution is based on them having more free it's like this more ability to be into the jobs they feel more independent, my body, my choice type of thing, right? Women liberation, uh, body positive movement. They think that that's evolution. They have no idea that it is de-evolution because they are flying away from men. My girls that are with me don't think like that. It's like, it's like night and day talking to them versus what I see on social media and around the current world. These girls get sick when they hear these girls talk dumb like that. My companions get sick. She'd be like, what the hell is she talking about? Oh, I don't need a man. Oh, I, I got a PhD. I'm doing just fine. Oh, we're able to get in jobs. We're, we're senators. We're in politicians. We're in the police force. I, it, it's good for women. Evolution. While I ask the girls that are around me, they're like, what the hell is wrong with these? What, what's wrong with them? What's going on? What do they mean evolution? They are de-evolving because they can't find a man. Most of these women are single, ladies and gentlemen. They don't have a man in their life. They have blue pill betas who are doing the pump and dump, but they ain't got nobody that's going to keep them. I definitely wouldn't. There's no need for why. She's in her masculine. I don't need another masculine woman. I'm only interested in the feminine. Don't know men like me need a woman who got a PhD and oh I got my own business. I get my own bag and yeah, uh 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 I got my own house, my own car, I'm doing everything all by myself. I don't need you. But okay, fine, I don't need you either. Goodbye. You're replaceable. And it's, you're you're replaceable. Insignificant, insufficient in my life. But yet they think that they are prosperous and they're going along, uh that they're working out quite well. And they can only be one leader in the home. Oh, we're equal. We can all do the same. We're the same. One of my girlfriends, my one of my companions did something that was very, very funny. That it was very funny, right? Um <laughs> when we was listening to a podcast, one of the girls told the guy, she said, Oh, yeah, we're equal. We're the same. Women can do it. Just as well as 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 uh, men can do it, men can do it, women can do it too. One of my companions, she said, "Let's arm wrestle, Morpheus." I said, "What do you mean?" She said, "Let's arm wrestle. Every last one of them lost. Let's go for a jog and a run. Every last one of them was behind me by several miles." <laughs> now, what are you talking about? What do you mean? Not a one of them did not need assistance from the age of, uh, what do you call that, 17 all the way up to uh, uh, the age that they are today. They needed some type of assistance, some type of help. Without being a sugar baby. You know, without selling themselves on Instagram. The public MO. See, there's something that my companions have learned that a lot of other women don't quite comprehend. We need each other. And 
women make bad choices most times and they realize that winter is coming hardship is coming they kept their ears to the ground according to how America is operating today and things aren't going to be natural and it's not going to be normal and it's not going to be healthy like it used to be and so they saw my teachings they heard what I had to say and they immediately jumped on board immediately opened up their ears because they see things 10 years in advance like I teach you and I show you on the often you got to look at things ahead of time church gives you a hope strategy liars on your media gives you a hope strategy hope that hope that will never come that's why I'm using that word it's senseless stupid emotional hope I hope no expectation bozo that's the word expecting for things to derail to an alternate world in a different way we have realized we're not going back ladies and gentlemen the America that used to be is not coming back. We're not going back to proper morals. And you need to wake the hell up for your children. They're not going to go back to where they can find a decent companion. Not without there being a measure of give and take. It's always going to be she's looking for something that he has to offer. And these little boys need to know what they're getting, what they're getting themselves involved in. He's going to be fleeced eventually. Or she has her hand in his her hand in his pocket all the damn time. Even if she has her own. Oh, I don't need his money. I'm, I, I, got, I got my PhD. I'm driving around in a, in a red Corvette. I don't need him. But she, then, okay, all right. Then why are you waiting for him to make more money than you then? Go sit down. Go sit down and put dummy on your forehead. Go sit down. Go. Go sit down and put dummy on your phone. Then why are you saying, oh, I need him to make as much money as me or more. It just don't work with the guy who who, who is who makes less than me. Go sit down and put dummy on your head. That's why these boys, these little boys need to grow up and realize that you ain't checking for him. You're checking for his check. Therefore, men need to know you don't care about men. You care about what men have to offer so they don't put themselves in a limited situation where they are getting better, whereas you're sitting back with a net trying to get all the butterflies you can get because what yours is yours and what his is yours, the common lady. B.A., we still want to sit back in church and say, oh, God's going to correct everything. Haven't corrected let me, let me stop because I was getting ready to say something. It hurts some people's feelings. I know I did that already. Haven't corrected any daggone thing because we are still going downhill fast and even faster because now some of the brakes are being taken off because nobody is checking for the immoral type of situations that we're dealing with. It's okay for women to think the way that they do. It's okay for your son not to have a proper wife when he grows older because we ain't teaching them what a proper wife is. There's no good example. Oh shoot, somebody's wives ain't even a good example of a good wife. Oh, oh. And you want him to you want him to go out there, "Oh, get find a good woman." They going to find no good a good woman. Excuse me. You can't even broadcast a, a good woman on social media. You can't even get a good woman to to at least be an advocate and to speak up for men to go against no good women. Go sit down in the corner and put dummy on your forehead. Go sit down. Go sit down. Go. Go sit down. Uh, I went to a store one of my companions. Actually, it was both of them. The other one had to work. Anyhow. And uh, one of them tapped me on the shoulders. She was like, you know, this little small tap on my shoulders. And I looked over and she was staring at me with her big cute eyes. Anyhow, she pointed towards an aisle, an aisle where there were a couple of kids there and a little girl. And I knew exactly what she was looking at. And she started shaking, my companion started shaking her head. And I said, what, what's up? And I looked. All I see. This little girl's uh, yoga pants was so tight. 
I can see her uh, panty lines. Well, we all could. The panty lines and the colors on her panties. Completely disgusted. And my companion knew exactly what I was thinking. And I looked at her like, whoa. So I walked up to the mother. That's what happened to be standing in the aisle. Because I, I don't give a damn. But, you know, I try to be respectful and right at the same time. You never know what type of interaction you're going to get. And I don't. I don't recommend this. So I begin to strike up a conversation to soften her up a little bit. Hey, hey, how was the day? And, oh, oh, the store got some good sales. Hey, yeah, they do. And oh, oh yeah, see, these are your kids? Yeah, oh, yeah, they're, they're my kids. And, oh, dang, you know, and I pretended my girls are sitting there smiling right at a distance, listening. Listening like a hummingbird. And, um, I said, you know, you got a man, you know, you married or something like that. Try to pretend like I'm hitting on her, right? You know, once you say, oh, I'm single. No, I, uh, no, I don't have a husband. So you got all these beautiful kids. You ain't got no husband. No, we divorced not too long ago. Uh oh, here we go, ladies and gentlemen. Wow. Three or four kids, no husband. So I direct the intentions at exactly what my whole point was after about five additional minutes. I said, so, you know, this this your daughter right here, she had on some very interesting pants. I say, yeah, I mean, they, they're so cute. I think they're so cute. They are so cute, right? I'm pointing at the little girl now who has this tight pants on, this tight yoga spandex on where we can actually, there's nothing to the imagination. Nothing. I said, so, I said, why you let her walk out of the house with that on? Again, she don't know where I, she didn't know where I was leading to. I'm trying to lead up to it gently because I don't want her screaming in the store talking about, oh, you're trying to tell me how to raise my kid. And you didn't to, to, to have to send my girlfriend over there to correct her. But anyhow, don't, don't want that type of drama because I'll walk away, let her deal with her. Anyhow. So she, she said the most interesting thing that every, almost every, almost every, that is 90 percent. The majority, again, the majority speaks, always use as an excuse. Well, it's comfortable. It's comfortable. So I wanted her to walk out of the house with something comfortable on. Something comfortable. See, when, when the majority of women are left to their own devices, they're going to F some stuff up. You, like, they're going to... They are not going to think at all. They are not going to concentrate on the dam on the damages that they create for themselves. When left to their own devices, they'll think just like this. Oh, it's okay. It's okay. I don't see nothing. It's fine. Let me let my daughter walk around practically naked. It's okay. It's fine. As long as she's comfortable. Why are you looking? That will be the next question. Why are you looking? Uh, she's walking around naked. What, what do you I mean? She in, in, in the public eye, what are you expecting lady? You know, that would be the response as well. Like, are you stupid? Yes. Yeah, I, I get it. Yeah. Uh-huh. And so I creep up another answer. I'm like, yeah, yeah, she's comfortable. But I said this, I said, could she have worn something else that's comfortable? Cause I know a couple of other places that, that make children clothing that is appropriate for the public that uh, 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 no stranger danger is going to be around because you're making it available. Almost like a lion. You're going to put the meat out there. You don't care. <laughs> sort of thing. He's like, well, we like to dress comfortable when we're walking out places because it's just, you know, it's so hot out here and I want to make sure that she's fine and stuff like that. And I, I gave her the boom, finally, since everything was, you know, her, brought her walls down. She thought I was trying to holler at her and trying to get with her. She saw that I was complimenting her, made her feel good, and she felt all comfortable enough. Then I gave her the left hook. And I'm sta I said, you know, I was able to see her from a distance, and it was kind of disturbing that, you know, you know the, the little teddy bears and flowers that are underneath her, you want people seeing that? What are you, what are you, what are you talking about? I said, it's just, it's just, ma'am, ma'am, ma'am. She's not dressed appropriately. 
if that was my daughter, I wouldn't dress her like that. She needs to, she needs to have some pants on at least, at least. I recommend a little dress, but because, you know, we're, we're um, in America here, we, uh, dressing like we should as a person, I was going to say gender because some of y'all, y'all fidgety with that word because it's too, it's too, what do you call that? Natural. <laughs> so y'all too fidgety with things that are natural because you like things that are unnatural uh, here in the country. So that, you know, you should go ahead and put on something that's a little more appropriate for her. Right. You know, she was like, well, I, I kind of get what you mean. Yeah, I, I kind of get what you mean. We was here's a, here it is. Excuse. Excuse, excuse, excuse that we always get uh, the need to be right. Uh, don't want to take accountability. I always want to blame it on something else. You know, we was in a rush to leave the house and and I was just you no, know, I was just trying to move fast and I just didn't have the time. Excuse, 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 as always, from the that type of gender. Always. Any excuse. But when something happened, now they want to blame it on everybody else. Oh, you pervert. Oh, you're pedophile. You're sick. Why are you looking? Why? Okay, well, ma'am, ma'am, this is your child. You put the clothes on your child. You brought the clothes. And I'm going to go deeper than this. And I'm going to state a fact that you all can pre pretty much keep up on. Again, it goes back to what Lee Abbott said about America. He's telling the exact truth. Who made the clothes? Who made the... You know good and damn well how to make proper clothes for children. You know good well what type of clothes you're putting even on on uh, grown women themselves. Somebody's making it. They don't care about who's wearing it. All they care about is the money. That's the absolute... Again, what did he say? Greedy people. Lazy, sick, unmoralistic country. So everything's acceptable now. They don't care about the effects thereafter. They're going to make it because they want the money behind it. You know, who gives a dang about the kids? Who gives a dang about the moralistic? Who cares about the effects later on? It's just like when they make a pill or make some type of uh, medicine or something like that or make some type of uh, stuff like Roundup or something. You know, uh, they make something. They don't care. about. Who cares about the effects? Who cares? You find out like five years, six years later, they already made their money. Who gives a dang? Oh, so what? You sue them for like $2 million. They already made like $50 million. Go suck on an egg somewhere. They are, you know, dumb. Because it's not about the effect of the people. It's about the effect that's in their wallet. How is it going to affect the infrastructure? Is it going to make their business prosper? Because the consumer is too damn gung-ho sheep. About thinking for yourself. Don't comprehend. And we go along with the program. Well, it's made, so I guess it's okay. Then why are you putting it on? And guess what? Why did they make it? Same as that woman who want to walk down the aisle and she got her, her breasts poking out. You can't, there's nothing left to the imagination. And then you approach her and you'll be in trouble if you sit up here and try to compliment her. Oh, baby, you look nice. And oh, look at that. You know, can I get a chance? What you doing later on? You single? You know, let me, let me pop with you for a little bit. She'll look at you like, why are you objectifying me? I'm tired of these men approaching me. Why are they approaching me? Well, ma'am, because you're walking around naked. What do you expect? These men are straight, at least, and they're interested in what they see. You think you're walking around a zoo or something like that around a bunch of animals? You're walking around men who are attracted to their species. Duh. But only it here goes another stamp. Only in America we can play stupid. Only in America we can fool ourselves because it's acceptable. But the moment you start talking truth like me and other people, oh, I don't want to hear it. He got to say he's out of his mind. He's the crazy one. He's this sick. <laughs> Ridiculous. But again, I don't want to keep going. It's already an hour and 44 minutes into this, and I got more audios to create for you. But let this be. A thought on your mind let this be a lesson as well maybe you got something out of it and uh, I'm glad that my three 
uh, biggest fans wrote this down for me to share with you because there are some people who are greatly affected and they're opening up their minds to the positive truth here. And you're listening to, you're listening to the Academy of Wow Men and yours truly the professor of this academy. And more power be unto our real mental 